for the life of me, I have no clue why this phone is telling me the battery is low. But I need to finish before midnight because I think there's going to be a park at midnight, guys. It's 23, 27 right now. So let's try and just seal this particular message, okay? So therefore, if a person is constantly interrupting with the peace of a Christian, God is going to um, knock them out the way. Now, uh, the law said, says, if it is possible for you, go check out the previous part to gain your bearings, please. The law says, if it is possible for you to live at peace with, with every man, then do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? If it is possible, live at peace with everybody. Um, if it's not possible, then the Lord, if they, if they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. If you can't keep fleeing and if you don't get martyred, you, God is just not going to leave you. Guys, we're not, we're in this world, we're not of it, but the Lord wants us to be successful gospel ministers. At some point, even the evangelist that gets arrested gets out of prison, even if it's after five years. Like, God does not just keep us. He doesn't just, you know what I mean? There is an end to suffering for Christians, either by death martyrdom or a brokering of peace for that saint insofar as you are consecrated, you know what I mean, to Jesus. You can't be Israel because then you're going to be scattered for years upon years upon years until ultimately you make peace with God there at Petra in the mountains because you fled to the mountains of Judea and then the Lord rocks up and what the second coming to do what foster peace between what you and the surrounding nations that have made out of you a cup of trembling. The Lord is not interested that I should continue to be a cup of trembling to my surrounding nations because I am at peace with him indefinitely. I've endured my persecution. So if the nation around me or the peoples around me are still harassing me when I've endured sufficiently my day of wrath or whatever you get my point my day of suffering my day of you know pain then there is somebody who is operating in those who are not close to God and so the spirit of the Lord does not lead them into perfection in terms of action and they are therefore easily marionette on a string a bow they are carried along by every wind of doctrine and they just capitulate to witchcraft spells their spirits are weak they are like uh, what do they call this a city that whose walls are broken anyone can come into it because they don't have self-control so when they bewitch them they bewitch them when you know what I mean you throw a spell at them to move left and they move left they literally get, can get pricked by you know a pin inside a voodoo doll so if at all you can't get to a Christian then you better get to the extenuating environment that's what the devil says and Christ is telling me fast on behalf of your extenuating environment so you can be at peace Make it make 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 the body of your mom and your sisters and your cousins like your body. You've got an iron dome over you. When weapons come at you, look at them on some oh whatever, <laughs> like blowing away some dirt on your collar. But they, despite you being like, get behind me, Satan. They come and they slap you. They come and they hurt you. They afflict you. Recently, I've been made like a hard knock domestic worker in the house. Dishes as in Gaga every day. And I'm just looking at these people on some habatum. This dude keeps on trying to get me to commit suicide. Every morning I wake up and I'm like... <laughs> and not just this dude, but a whole bunch of people are hurting me just to get me to give up throwing the towel, compromise. <laughs> That's me every day. Ah! That's me every day. But my mom is not doing that. Neither is my little sister. I am a domestic servant in the worst way. I'm going to say that I'm going to say I'm going to to my mom and they don't care I'm an embarrassment but they don't care it's just carrying on if it is possible live at peace with everybody it turns out I can't even if I am super duper trying to foster peace they are sowing discord and according to God this thing is an abomination to him anyone at all that sows discord between brothers and these things are an abomination to Emmanuel go read the scriptures it is also a fruit of the sinful nature these people this man they are sowing discord in my family and on top of that there was a death curse and operation that is threatening my older sister's life the Lord told me to fast not so much for myself but for them so they can shake off whatever dust is on their shoulders that they can't see so it is mine to send a ubiquitous wind or a whirlwind that's going to dust it off on their behalf because they're not yet ready or safe in Christ that is why believers you need to foster a discipline of prayer if you love your friends if you love your family even if they're hurting you you must pray your prayers might not even get them saved for Christ but they might save you from bereavement because an attack coming against you might turn as an arrow back to sender when it lands hitting an iron dome and sender it then comes and knocks your mom down knocks your sister down your brother knocks your best friend the cousin knocks your uncle down and now you have to go and attend a funeral funeral of which you think now nah, my uncle just got a heart attack no your uncle was killed but if we stand in the gap and fast when god tells us to fast it's not so much that we're covering and protecting ourselves because we're there we've arrived it is so much that we can cover and protect them. The Lord has basically besieged me to put down the staff of Aaron on behalf of my obstinate family members and former friends. All these people that just keep on throwing sorcery at me that I might not have to hear by the grapevine. And okay, somebody has passed away. And then I'm like, oh, and I pine for a couple of days. More so, would it be devastating? Never mind pining. 
if it was right within my own camp. We are not going to go down like Horus the Rebellion, not if there is one man in the town. I've yet to be extracted out of Sodom, so God does not, it will not rain fire and brimstone on my family, not before I'm out of here. So unless the rapture happens, we'll see so I can't die. If I get raptured, then maybe my sister can be dropped down, because for my sake, they are kept alive. Only when I'm out of Sodom will it rain fire and brimstone. Only then will my older sister have to face God at the great white throne judgment. Only then. But until then, mine is to ensconce them. Katabelo, le fasting. So this is fasting on their behalf. You know how David laments, Uguti, Laban, Laban, they treat me like rubbish. When they were going through a lot, me, I wore sackcloth and ashes and I fasted for them. While God has been doing that with Christians, it turns out forever and a day. He has been making us fast for our friends and family members, unbeknownst even to ourselves. The Lord confirms to me that indeed I'm not like the prophets of Baal and I have to keep cutting myself just to get my YouTube channel. He's telling me to fast for them. So they would repent one and even if they don't repent, they would be given grace time to do so. And even then, not for them, not for their sake, but for his own name's sake and of course for his disciples' sake. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your vindication like the noonday sun if you commit your way to him. That is Jesus. So I have abided, I've obeyed. My fast commenced today. The Lord told me to fast for a month. I was going to do the fast that I've been doing all along. But the Lord was like, I want you to also take out meat out of your diet. Like when you do eat that one meal a day, I don't want to, I don't want any meat in it. And I got that from a dream where my dinner plate having my chickens, my, you know, drumsticks there hanging out, making 10 and I'm busy salting them. And it was really, they were shrouded in darkness, almost like something was really wrong with the chicken, right? I then, t today, this afternoon, as I was walking up and down, the Lord was like meatless, like I heard it, a voice, you know, coming to me. He said, meatless, meatless, meatless. And I remember being like, okay, 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 okay. Um, um, okay, fine, I'll start a fast. I have peace about it, I'll fast. And I will extract um, meat out of it. But I wanted to understand why he wanted me to extract meat out of it. You know, curiosity, killed a cat, but not a Christian. Hey, let's move on to the next part.